A lot of traders struggle with anticipating where the market is likely going to reverse or retrace or even where they should place their take profits during their executions. Now, anticipating when a market should retrace or reverse sounds simple, right? It should always retrace or reverse when it taps into your higher time frame key PDRA level. But the thing is, what happens in this scenario? What happens when there were multiple imbalances that were left behind? Yeah. Yeah. Or even these key high time frame objective being your bullish order blocks. It becomes significantly harder to anticipate which discount array are the ones where you can expect a retracement or a reversal. So in this video, I will introduce to you a tool that will help you and give you better refinement skills in anticipating which key PD array has the higher chance of creating that retracement or reversal. And that is where your standard deviations comes into play, which is this. These are my settings for my standard deviations. You can pause the video now and copy the settings. But essentially, what these negative numbers mean is this is one standard deviation, two standard deviation, four standard deviations, and so on. Right? So pause this video, copy down these settings. Once you've done that, this is how you would utilize them. So, whenever you have a reversal of some sorts, where you want to draw your standard deviations is based on where you had a manipulation to create that reversal. Manipulation being it takes out sell side liquidity in this bullish example, and the high that became your market structure break. So, the leg that took out this sell side liquidity for your manipulation and also generated the swing high, where if price was to go past that swing high, that becomes your market structure break. That is where you want to anchor your standard deviation from the low of that leg to the higher of that leg. And here, this is what your standard deviations would look like. So, in this video, generally speaking, the two important levels in your standard deviation is your minus 2 and your minus 2.5. Between these key levels is where most of the time price will give you that retracement or reversal. So if we look at it from a bearish standpoint, it's the same thing. This time, it's with buy side liquidity. So where the manipulation leg was, where it took out buy side liquidity and then price gave you that reversal, taking out the legs low, which is your market structure break. This is where you would anchor your standard deviation from the high of the leg to the low of the leg. And again, when price comes down into the minus two or minus 2.5 level, this is where you can anticipate a retracement or a reversal. So that is how you would place your standard deviation level. Now, this is how you would utilize it in your trading. So here, to avoid any confusion, let's just focus on one time frame for now. If we focus on the one time frame being our hourly, look at what price does here. Price gave you a bearish market reversal pattern at this high. Takes out your buy side liquidity. And then what does it do? It takes out this swing point, which becomes your market structure break. So this leg from here to there, that was your manipulation. That is where you want to anchor your standard deviation from the high of that leg to the low of the leg. Let me remind you, this level here is your first standard deviation. This is your 1.5, 2 and 2.5. So the key level we're interested in is essentially this parameter over here between minus 2 and minus 2.5. And like I mentioned, between those two levels is where you could anticipate for price to either have a significant retracement or a reversal. You can see if I remove this, look at all of these PD arrays that you can anticipate for price to have a retracement off of or a reversal. There's simply just too many PD arrays to be able to tell which one is going to give you that significant bullish reaction. Hence why. When you pair it up with standard deviations and what key PD array level is at that standard deviation, this is where you could start to refine and determine which PD array has the highest probability of price coming back into before giving you a significant reaction. So here, what key PD array is at this level? Not a specific one, but the most immediate one is this large imbalance. And if you draw it out, you can see that is exactly what we got there. Price came into that large imbalance and gave you a significant bullish retracement. Refining it to our key standard deviation level, you could see it overall respected that key deviation level. So you could already see how you could use this to determine your higher time frame targets, right? Where you can anticipate a retracement or reversal, and also your lower time frame executions where you could place your take profits. If we have another look at this example here, you have this old load that price heavily violated with displacement, giving you your bearish market structure break. This swing high with your buy side liquidity. So as you would have guessed, the same thing. This leg from this high to this low is what you're interested in, in anchoring your standard deviation. 
drawing it from the high to the low. This is where you could use it to anticipate where price is likely going to have that retracement. And again, there's no PDO rate to the left, but that's not necessarily needed. Because here, your standard deviation has proven to be enough. Because between minus 2 and minus 2.5, look how precise price respects that key level and gives you a significant retracement. Now, even if it doesn't give you a complete reversal and price continues lower from here, that doesn't invalidate your use of the standard deviation. Because the whole point of using standard deviation is to anticipate where price is likely going to give you that reaction. And once you figure that out, that is where you could reevaluate your analysis or that is where you could place your take profits to exit out of that position because price is likely going to retrace or reverse from there. So now that you have a solid understanding of where to place your standard deviations and how you would place them, let's begin with your top down analysis and how you could use them for your entries. So here, what does price do? Take out the sell side liquidity and it gives you the significant market structure break followed by displacement. So that is a very convincing sign that we are going to go bullish and that is your bullish market reversal. Again, anchoring your standard deviation, you are interested in this manipulation leg. You would draw it from the low to the high. Look at how many PD arrays there are. This liquidity, these relatively equal highs, and also these minor imbalances that are left behind. So you could see how it could become troublesome to identify at what key level are we likely going to retrace from. But you know, key levels is between minus 2 and minus 2.5. And what does that line up with? This imbalance over here. So this is where we can anticipate for price to come into before giving you either a retracement or a reversal. Playing price out. So you can see how perfectly it taps into that imbalance. The high of this imbalance is 0 0.6670 and the high of this high is 0 0.6676 and that is where we are starting to get our bearish price action. So if I replay here, this is where you can start to drop down onto the lower time frame and look for your reversal to catch the shorts. Because of how large this range is, you don't necessarily have to draw your standard deviation from the lowest to the highest. Look at how large that bottom wick is. You could get away with drawing it from the open and using only the body of the candle because on most of the feed, the wicks would be different. So here, let me remind you. Four hour, we drew out our standard deviation. Price comes into your minus two and minus 2.5 standard deviation. This is a key level for anticipating price to retrace or reverse. So we are playing shorts off of the anticipated retracement. And this is where I drop down onto a lower time frame. Look for your market structure confirmation. Once you get a confirmation, you would anchor your standard deviation again at the manipulation leg. And then your take profits would be at this key level. Because on the lower time frame, this is where you could anticipate a significant retracement or a reversal. So playing price out, you can see price has already given us characteristic of a change in state of delivery. Up close candles are supporting price to go lower. So here. When price displaces past the open of these three consecutive up candles, that is where you get your bearish order block. Right, so that's your change in state of delivery. Premium arrays are being respected, discount arrays are being disrespected. You have this imbalance that you can enter off of, and your stop loss could be above this high. Take profit all the way down to that low. And let's see if it taps into our take profit. And there you go. It was a pretty long trade, but look at the significant reaction you get after tapping into this key standard deviation level. Price was steadily going down from here, but the moment it tapped into minus 2 and minus 2.5, it had a candle with an extremely large wick on both sides. But nonetheless, this is where your take profit was, rounded for a very clean 4 hour trade. And as you would expect, price gives you a significant retracement after tapping into that standard deviation. Right, so if we continue playing price out, what does price do? It gives you another market structure shift in the form of this old low. So it's likely that we are going to continue lower. And this is where you could anchor another standard deviation. This time, because price is fractal, we can use the hourly as our high time frame. So from this high to this low, that was where you had your manipulation leg. Minus 2 to minus 2.5, what is it aligned with? This imbalance over here. So that is where we can anticipate for price to come back into on the higher time frame before possibly giving us a retracement or a reversal. So with that in mind, this could become your overall draw on liquidity. And here, paying price up. You have this imbalance that price could come into before giving you a reaction to continue lower or this bearish order block. So let's drop down into the 15 minute and wait for that bearish market confirmation. Right, so it taps into your higher time frame bearish order block. 
and it gives you a significant market structure break. So here, this is where you would draw your standard deviation from the manipulation all the way down to there. So that could be where your immediate take profit is for your lower time frame execution. It is also in line with your higher time frame standard deviation because we are expecting price to come all the way down to here after giving you a higher time frame market structure break to the downside. Right, so this minor standard deviation, this is what you could use for your immediate take profit on the lower time frame. You don't always have to target for this overall drawn liquidity. But if we zoom in, what does price leave behind? These minor bearish displacement are your old accumulation level, tight new distribution. So this is where you can have your entries. There, stop loss above that old accumulation level, tight new distribution. And then you can look to target 2.5. It taps us in, and then it goes for 2.5. Now, because your overall standard deviation goes all the way down to here, into this higher time frame imbalance, that is where you are expecting for price to come back into on the higher time frame direction before giving us either a minor retracement or a complete reversal. This is where you could take a partial and then ride price all the way down to this overall draw on liquidity. You could use the higher time frame standard deviation as your take profit target. But in most cases, it's better off in the long run if you use your lower time frame standard deviation as they are your immediate draws on liquidity and the majority of the time, when you hold such a large position with an extremely large risk to reward ratio, it's not as sustainable in the long run. Right, but here, let's see if it comes back into that overall draw on liquidity. And as you would imagine, it does. So that is how you could use standard deviation level to refine the key levels where you could anticipate either a retracement or a reversal off of. And with that in mind, you could utilize that for your take profits. Not only that, but you could also use it for your overall draw on liquidity on the higher time frame. This was a fairly short video because we are just going over the basics of standard deviation. However, I hope you guys found this video helpful. And that concludes this video. And I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. Like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.